there's no one here, which is fine. That's grand, because I'm just starting. Uh, I'm going to introduce this for the sake of the recording that's being made. <laughs> what I'm doing is I'm making a new eye patch. I'm going to decorate this one with these velvet effect oak leaves. It's going to be a very hobbity kind of eye patch, which is the vibe I'm going for. Uh, I'm going to be doing it a little differently this time to how I usually do it. Ah yes, the dogs. Um, usually I would use one of these as the core of the eye patch to give it rigidity, but uh, this is the last one I have left. I get these in Lidl, they're actually spare lenses for sports glasses. Now Lidl gets their things in fairly haphazardly, and I don't want to use the last one I have left just in case I need to replicate it in future. So what I'm going to do instead of using this one is I'm going to try and recreate it using Warbler. I've never ever used Warbler before, so we're going to see how it goes. So I think what we'll do first is, is mark it out and then, then cut it and then try to shape it with the heat gun. I think that's how Warbler works. <laughs> um, also, uh, what I usually use for the straps is a, um, a cheap nylon dog collar. However, I'm also out of those. So with every dog collar I've bought has come a lead. So I'm going to try using the fabric from the lead and these snap closures, the, the lobster claw closures I bought, and try to make the uh, try to make the strap that way. So usually I don't make them completely from scratch. This time I'm making it completely from scratch. So we'll see how well that turns out. All right. Now, let's see. Usually, I only have to draw this out twice. I draw it out once for the front panel, once for the back panel. This means I have to do it a third time. See what it does. Now, the, part of the reason why I'm doing these live streams, um, it's partially because it's easy content. Uh, easy content I can knock out quickly and not have to worry about that very much. But um, it's also because it gives me accountability. Um, it means I will commit to doing this once a week, to working on an eye patch, and I need them for a project I'm working on. Like, I could just use this one eye patch forever and never have more, but this gives me a, a more of a reason, more incentive. Now I need to grab a scissors. <laughs> So I used a thick marker to mark this out, and I'm cutting around the outside edge. I'm hoping that gives me enough space to compensate for when this is uh, bent into position. I'm also hoping the warbler will be rigid enough. I've never worked with this material before, so I don't know how it behaves really. Um, but you are supposed to be able to bond it with other pieces of warbler. So if it's not rigid enough by itself, I can just back it with more and hopefully that will make it more rigid. Well, I have a feeling I may get to the point where I'm trying to replicate that lens with metal or with a 3D printer. Uh, I have a 3D printer coming, it should be arriving sometime this month. Cheap one, small one, only does very small things, but hopefully this is within range. Um, 
and I should be more forge capable in a few in a few weeks. So metal might be possible then. I may need gloves. That's what the guides were telling me, that you really need gloves for Wardla. Hold on. God, something smells delicious. Well, there's no one here, and I need the gloves, so I'm just going to run in and get them very quickly. Hopefully no one will arrive before I get back. Good, nobody came. All right. So let's see what we can do. might bring you all over with me while I do this. Okay. Can you sit there? Let's be very aware that I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, well, that seems very pliable. More pliable than I was expecting. That's good, in a way. Some... <laughs> Alright. Fuck the gloves. I am too dyspraxic to use gloves to do this. That's not that bad. That's not that bad. Alright. Okay. Alright, now do I just leave that to cool? I think I may need a second piece to back this up for rigidity. Oh yeah, it's nowhere near as thick as the lens even. I think that's going to need to be 
thickened of a little cool. out a second piece and bring it over. So I'm cutting out a second piece of warbler to uh, back up the first one because it, um, I think it definitely needs to be thicker. I might even need a third, honestly. The difference is substantial. But if this works, um, I won't have to worry about it anymore. It's not bad. It's not bad. It's not as rigid as it could be, but it's not bad. And this one's going to need trimming down when I'm done with it. But okay. Hotter than the last one? Well, that's alright. Or rather, you're probably not hotter. You probably just had less time to cool because I wasn't fucking around with gloves this time. Like I did last time. Okay. Oh, and then I can lay this one in on top of it to fuse them together. That's a good idea. I don't know if that's how sticking warbler works. I don't know if you need to have both of them hot or not, but I'm sure we'll find out. Oh. Oh no, don't stick to the You know, don't stick to Did I have you tipped up the wrong way? I wonder. Oh, have I caused a problem here? <laughs> okay. I'm going to try heating up the whole thing, seeing if that helps. And here is me. Very foolishly thinking, oh, I think I'm getting the hang of this material. Okay. I'm, I'm clearly not getting the hang of it at all. 
Which is fine, I don't have to never work it before. So I'm just gonna have to you can do with new materials that you wouldn't have thought of doing before. This might just be my new there's a few reasons why this could be a good eye patch material actually. The um the the warbler has an adhesive back, so usually I have to to glue down the um the back panel so it doesn't um so it doesn't stretch out when the, the patch is secured and press against my eye. But um this is actually pretty good. This would mean I could just heat it up and press the leather against it, and that would be the adhesive, which would make the job an awful lot easier. So I'm going to let that cool down. I might trim off a bit around the edge. didn't seem to go wrong, so I'm going to say it was a good idea. Yeah, now it's nearly as thick as the original lens, so that should be more of a digit. So, hold on. So like I said, this time I'm doing an oak leaf eye patch. Next time it'll either be the tree bark or the uh, the fish skin leather. Um, after I have those three done I don't have, I have the concepts for the other two planned. One is literally Odin and the other one is post-apocalypse. But I don't, I'm not totally sure what I want to do for either one. I'm not sure how I want them to look yet, so, um, so yeah, <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll get to those ones when I have ideas for them. Alright, that's cooling down. And it's, it's not sticking to the front this time, good. I'm gonna let that cool. It was kind of rigid. It was kind of rigid when it was one layer, so I'm hoping this is better. Twice as thick should be twice as rigid, hopefully. Unless I somehow made it less rigid. All I can really do is wait. I should Google how long you're supposed to let warp a set. Actually, I don't think we need to be over here anymore. So we're gonna go back to the main table where it's a little bit easier to conduct things. So, let's see. How long does Warbler take to dry? That's fine. Be -be -be. Me, 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 me. What is Warbler? What is a thermoplastic? I am still confused. Why is Warbler special? Uh, 
This is not providing me much useful information. You know, this isn't telling me the thing I came to look for. Because of course it's not. <laughs> okay. Well, that's got a very nice surface to it. It's much more rigid. In fact, it's about as rigid as the original lens. There is the Warbler one. It's never that easy. Of course it's never that easy. Okay, so here's the... um. What I'm doing to start with this eye patch process, I'm just going to fill you in. Um, I usually use one of these as a core for my eye patches. It's got a deep curve to it, so it sits on my face very comfortably, and it holds the eye patch away from my eye. My eye is actually open under here. Um, however, I usually get these in Little, which is a supermarket that has very irregular stock. Uh, they're spare lenses for sports goggles. Uh, this is my last one. I don't know when I'll be able to get a new one again. I have no idea, so I didn't want to use this to make an eye patch. So instead, I've attempted replicating it in Warbler. And this is my very first time ever using Warbler. And it's it's worked pretty well. Um, yeah, I'm very satisfied with that which means I can start on the actual lens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's important to keep it off the, the eye because the pressure can cause pain and other unpleasant things. So the next part of the job is to make the two leather patches, one, one for the front panel, one for the rear panel. So I need to grab my leather. If I have any left. I'm sure I have more leather left. Has it fallen down behind? Shut up, you. Leather just fell down behind the table. <laughs> yeah, just smooshing an eye, not great, even if the eye doesn't work properly. Still not great. Alright, so take the core. This is the obvious part. It's very simple. You just trace around it. And then give it a little bit of an extension on either side for space to attach your strap. Where did I leave the scissors? Did I leave it at the other table? I think I did. Yes, I did. it out. I have to say, I'm very pleased with Warbler. 
as a material. I was a little worried it wouldn't be rigid enough for this, but, um, and w with one layer it wasn't, but the back of it is adhesive. It's a, it's a self-adhesive material when, when heated, so, um, I was able to smush two pieces of warbler together to reinforce it, and now it's just as rigid as the original lens, pretty much. So, um, yeah, I can definitely see why, um, I can definitely see why, and, and especially more so than foam, because I've seen people using foam, um, for things uh, as like, especially as a substitute for leather, because uh, the problem for me with uh, with foam as a substitute for leather is that using the foam seems like substantially more work than just using leather. It actually looks harder and more complicated. I use leather a lot. Um, so, like, other than, say, like, you want vegan materials or something, I don't really see much point in using foam, but warbler's very, very easy to work. All you need is a heat gun. Um, I could definitely see the, the utility in using warbler over other materials. And um, at the moment I've only got two sheets of the stuff, but um, I will be buying more in future because this is, it's, it's actually uh, a lovely material. Anyway, how are you, Burak? How are, how are you doing? What kind of day are you having? Yeah, I had to, uh, as loath as I am to do it, I had to buy this on Amazon. I couldn't really find a good supplier within Ireland. Um, one of the cosplayers used to be like a, uh, an ambassador and would sell it and do, um, and do like lessons and stuff on how to use it. But, um, I think she's retired now. Um, so yeah, I had to resort to Amazon. But, um, even just cutting down on Amazon purchases is helpful. I now I now only buy from Amazon if I have no other alternative. Um, I think the last thing I bought on Amazon, other than the Warbler, was a um, an out of print book, um, which I need for research. It's called Shanachus. And the, the Shanachus, the lore of Annie Vaughan. Uh, Annie Vaughan was a storyteller, I believe, in the 30s. And the book is a collection of her stories. And it's it's actually really good because it's, um, the book's bilingual. Um, it's got it written in the Irish it was originally written in. And every alternating page is the English translation, which I really like. I think it's it's extremely helpful to do it that way. Um, okay, yeah, that's that's perfect. Um, yeah, it is a shame, but yeah, I, th I I I enjoyed that book. But Amazon was just a go-between. It was actually coming 
the seller was a um a second hand bookshop in Dublin called Books Upstairs. So I don't feel as bad about that, seeing as I was buying from an actual retailer, a local bookshop, rather than directly from Amazon, if you know what I mean. They were just the go-between. Alright, I need to punch some holes now, so I'm going to get my punch and my hammer. And my punching block. Alright, so... Yeah, no ethical consumption under capitalism. So, <laughs> this is This used to be a shelf that was in my room that was very badly attached to the wall by whoever lived here before us. But it is now my punching block. You can see all the indentations. And it's where I just use it to punch the, uh, the thread holes in the leather. So I can sew better and more reliably. Now technically, doing it this way isn't very good for the leather. Um, if I were making something like clothing, something that would be under more pressure, I wouldn't do it this way. I would use an awl. But, because the difference is that this cuts the leather, whereas an awl splits it. It, um, it, it pushes the leather apart at natural points in the grain. Whereas this, this cuts into the leather, which weakens it, but because it's not actually going to be under tremendous amounts of strain or anything, it's fine. This is the slightly more tedious part of the operation. A one major advantage, or hopefully major advantage, to using Wardler, we'll see in a, in a minute or so, is that usually when I'm doing this, when I'm partway done through sewing, I have to squeeze a super glue tube in between the core and the back panel to glue the back panel down. But Warbler, the back of it is adhesive when heated. So I'm hoping that all I have to do is heat it up and press the leather against it and let that set and it'll, it'll do the same job. Because that would be much easier, much, much simpler. Of course, obviously, the, the more often I make these things, the more little tricks and things I'm going to learn on doing it better. Okay, that's one panel. Let's do the other one. <laughs> yeah, that's very fair. That's very fair. We'll see. might even at some point make some kind of press for uh, 
for putting the warblade into the right shape. Because that could save me time. I could, um, I could mass produce cores and just have them ready for when I want to make eye patches. I didn't want to try that before I knew if it would work or not as a material, but it seems like it's definitely going to work, so we'll see. I might do that in future. Yeah, yeah, that would be dead handy. Make it a lot more reproducible. And we're done. All right. Okay, so now for sewing. This is my my eye patch making kit. I keep all the necessary tools in here, or most of them. All the tools that I don't use for anything else. Is your problem come over there there we go all right so I start off without having the the core inside because that's easier yeah yeah and uh, and also because it's waterproof because the roof of my my shed is made this workshop it's made out of scrap materials that whatever I just happened to have lying around that could maybe be turned into a workshop. So while it's mostly rain resistant, it is not waterproof. So some things have to be uh, have to be stored quite specifically. I'm going to get it properly fixed at some point. Um, my wife um, got a job last week she starts on uh, she starts tomorrow um, so we won't be fully dependent on my income anymore so I'll be, uh, I'll be more have more money to spend on things like fixing up the workshop properly Now, actually, actually, I'm about to mis make a mistake that I made last time when I was doing the peacock patch. And I know why I've been making the mistake. Um, because I was making a bunch of, uh, made about five or six eye patches for people who got blinded in the, uh, in the uprisings in the US um, and they were plain eye patches they didn't they didn't have decoration so I got into a rhythm doing that because what you're supposed to do if you're decorating the eye patch is put the decoration on before you assemble it and, and thank you thank you for the congratulations um, cause, because my wife's from America um, we had to go through a whole rigmarole for her to be allowed to get a job here. And we had, we only got the system, we only got everything sorted and got her permission and everything about a month before lockdown started. And she's been here roughly three years. 
just not allowed to have a job and then not able to find one for a while into that. So um, it, it had been very disheartening for her. But now, um, now it's better. Now she can work. Not that she's particularly excited about, um, <laughs> about working at Home Savers, but she is excited about having her own money and things like that. <laughs> Where do I want to lay this out? See, I need to find a way. Yeah, yeah, I bet they did. I bet they did. <sighs> You'd think you could just marry someone and that would sort the whole thing out, but no. They got rid of that. Uh, right. So I have to think... To think of how it looks this way. This is the side that goes up to my eye. I'm just thinking about this. Do I want to sew these down or glue? I, I usually prefer to, to sew. I don't trust glue. I never trust glue. But that's okay, Lily. That's fine. Don't worry about it. Um, I'm most of the, or, well, not even most. I'm part of the way through making this new eye patch. Um, I'm just trying to add the oak leaves to the front panel. Um, and I'm deciding whether I want to glue them down or sew them down. And like I was saying, I, I don't, I don't trust glue. I just don't. I mean, I, it might be that I'm, I'm too impatient to use it properly or that I'm too dyspraxic to lose, use it properly, but I just don't trust glue. Okay, okay, so I think what I'm gonna do, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sew the leaves through, I don't know if you can see that, but I'm gonna try and sew the leaves through their center line and leave the rest, um, just tag down the rest here and there as I'm sewing it together. So that means I'm gonna have to, um, Oh, Burke, you're a friend of Will. Cool. But yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna tag it down at the edges when I'm doing assembly. I think that'll 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 do the job. So I'll need to mark down where I want to sew and do a little bit more punching. So I can use that as my line. Alright.
Ooh, I hadn't thought of that, but that's a really good idea, Lily. That's a really good idea. I will do that. Or I might switch to a different thread. I doubt you give me an idea now. I might have to get some black thread for that. Well, I'll do the hole punching first, and then I'll get thread. I'll have to run inside for that, but that's alright. Well, hopefully, I'll be able to remember to make this a weekly thing. I completely forgot last week. It'll at least be a weekly thing until I have 10 eye patches, including the goggles. So, let's see, I have five made, including the goggles. This is number six. That's probably enough. Um, I could get dark green or dark brown. Um, I've got lots of thread in lots and lots of different colors. Um, a dark brown might actually be better. I think you're right. Dark brown. Or no, maybe the dark green. Maybe the dark green. Well, we'll see. We'll see. Well, we'll, we'll see right about now because I have to go get the thread now because I'm finished punching. I will be back very shortly. I'm going to leave the stream there. It's, it's fine. It's fine. You're fine. You can, you can listen to the birds. Okie dokie. <laughs> Bird ASMR. <laughs> and we, we have a, a large flock of starlings that like to spend a lot of time in our garden. But yeah, I got this nice dark green. And uh, going inside I was thinking when we have the, um, at the moment we're working on turning the spare room into a craft room for, you know, small crafts, for, for, for crafts that don't require the use of power tools. Um, and um, it might be worth, it might be an idea to start moving these in there when that's ready, which it nearly is.
but that might be easier. Unless, of course, people like all the bird song, in which case I'll just go inside when it's uh, when it's raining or snowing or something. S. Oh, you like the birds. Okay. Yeah, I like the birds too. I like them a lot. Um, we've been trying to make our garden into a nice place for for animals and birds to hang out, but it's almost impossible for most terrestrial animals to get into our garden. So it's mostly just been a place for birds to hang out. <laughs> Possibly the occasional rat, but I like rodents. Our, um, our bedroom window overlooks part of the, or part of the roof. So we like to, uh, anytime we have leftover dinner, we like to put it out on the roof for the birds. Which is only one of the reasons why they like our garden so much. Unfortunately, since um, since my pet rook died, we don't get as many rooks in the garden er, as we used to, because they would often come just to visit him. And that was very nice. It was very sweet to watch them as well. They would they would come and spend time with him, and even though he got fed every single day, they would bring him food anyway. It was very sweet. They're very charming animals, rooks. They have a, a strong community spirit and they're, they're very generous and very kind. And they didn't care that, that Earhart was a stranger from a different part of the country. He was another rook, and so he was welcome. But unfortunately, he got bitten by a cat or something. Um, Jesus, the year before last. And uh, cat saliva is... It's basically venom. They're they're a bit like Komodo dragons. Their um their mouths are so um so dirty that uh, the bacteria in their saliva basically acts as venom. So most animals, most small animals like birds and rodents that get l even licked by a cat often don't survive it. I mean, the bite wasn't even deep or severe. I was very upset. I'd had Earhart for six or seven years. Um, and the things he survived, like, he got, um, the reason I had him was that he had been sucked through a jet engine and his right wing was mangled in a way that was never going to heal never uh, he, he just couldn't fly and never would ever again 
So, so I was his caretaker. And he would sit up on my hand and he sometimes liked to play with my hair. And when, when we lived in Dublin in a, in a small apartment in Ranala, he would, um, he lived inside at that time. And anytime I ordered food, I'd give him half of it. Um, especially if we ordered Indian, um, I'd get a, two samosas and I'd give him one of the samosas and I'd give him some of the food from my plate. And that was, that was very nice. He even, um, apparently crows and corvids in general in, in captivity, they, um, they come up with names for their humans, particular sounds that they make when they're, when they want to communicate with their human. Um, and I'm pretty sure Earhart had a name for me. He, he had this specific thing he would do sometimes where, um, when he wanted attention, which was a long call, which is normal. That's, that's a very normal rook sound, but he would also throw in at the end of the call, this little, almost like a chicken cluck. And I think that chicken cluck was my name. <laughs> yeah, he was a little shit. Like, um, it took me a while to figure it out that in the, in the first month, he would, um, take things from his perch and throw them on the ground and I'd pick them back up and he'd throw them on the ground again. The little shit, the absolute prick, I looked it up. Um, it's something parrots, pet parrots often do. Um, and corvids are about the same intelligence level as a parrot, if not a little bit higher. Um, he was teaching me to play fetch. That's, that's what it was. He was teaching me to play fetch. Like I was his pet. Um, and there was other things like, um. His original cage was one that I made myself and it was all held together with nuts and bolts and some of the some of them were exposed on the inside of the cage and he figured out what they were and how they worked and loosened them with his beak the little shit so that he could get out Uh, when when we were living in Drogheda, um, he would always complain if I left the light on past uh, past nightfall because he wanted to go to sleep if it was dark outside. And um, one night, he actually leapt down from his perch. He wasn't in a cage at that point. He leapt down from his perch onto the floor. And he went in under my desk and he pulled the plug for the lamp out of the wall and then settled down on the crossbar under the desk to go to sleep. Very clever animals. Very clever. And that beak is powerful very powerful um best to go to sleep very clever animals very clever
And that beak is powerful. Very powerful. Um, one time I'd had to be away for a while, and I left him plenty of food, and I left him plenty of water. But he got down from his perch somehow, because he always finds a way. And because he was down from his perch, he didn't have um, he didn't have anything to drink because that was all up by his perch. So he went under my desk again, where I had a bunch of I had bought um a six pack of cans of coke, and he punched a hole in one of the cans and had been drinking out of that while I was gone. Like, punched a hole in aluminium with essentially his face. And the fact that he, he knew what it was, he knew it was, he knew it had liquid in it. <laughs> yeah, kind of like a fire drinking out of the wine barrel. But, um, he obviously knew what it was because he'd probably been watching me drink out of them myself and knew there was a drink in there, knew that it was liquid. Because that's, that's one thing they don't tell you about crows is that if you have one in your house, they watch everything you do. They learn all about everything. <laughs> ah, bollocks. <sighs> okay, so I'm gonna have to tie that off and start a new thread. You know the thing where the thread ties itself into a knot? I hate that. I absolutely despise it. It just happened, and I tried to force the knot through, but the thread snapped. So I'm going to have to tie that off and go from there. There we go. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Oh no, is is not an omen. It happens all the time. I it's it's almost inevitable. Every single sewing project I do, that happens. Practically an occupational hazard.
the um, the texture of this leaf is very resistant to the thread going through that loop. <laughs> it does not want the thread to go through. <laughs> I got it through once, but I'm I'm trying to tie a second knot now, just to um, just to make sure. Okay, come on, I will force you through. Come on, you wee bollocks! There we go. We actually have a, um, a fully functioning, brand new, never used sewing machine inside. We really got that for red, because I prefer to hand sew. Um, I sh probably should use it though. I've only used a sewing machine once, and it was certainly faster. But, um, <laughs> But I wasn't able to, to sew as straight as I do from, um... Oh, hello. Hello to you there in Texas. Um, well, I've had to do a few more stages to this project than I usually do. I had to recreate the lens I usually use for a core for the eye patch. So we've got that done. I made it out of Wardla. We have the front and back panels made and punched and I'm now sewing the decoration onto the front panel then we can assemble the patch itself and then I can assemble the strap <laughs> I'm sure there's a lot of fun in sewing machines um, I'm sure it's I'm sure it's so much easier I'm told it's stronger but my stitches tend to be quite so it's quite strong. Yeah. Yeah, I think um like everything has its place really. Um except you know, like bigotry. But um everything has its place and it's just a matter of knowing what you use where. I'm just long in the habit of hand sewing. Um, I'm, I'm long in the habit of hand sewing. Uh, it's all I it's all I knew, and I'm still trying to get myself into the mindset that I'm nowhere near as poor as I used to be. I can actually afford things now. Because <laughs> um, I grew up just having, doing everything manually. Um, and making everything out of bits of scrap and, and improvising everything. And breaking that mindset has been really hard. Like, I could probably afford a mini table lathe, but instead I have made a mini table lathe out of an old drill and some drill stands. Because that's, that's the kind of approach I'm used to having to have. Waxing the thread's not a bad idea. Um, The knot has happened again. Um, yeah, waxing the threads, not a bad idea. No! No! <laughs> and it's the last, it's the last stitch. It's okay. It doesn't matter. Oh yeah, waxing the threads, not a bad idea. I just can't be arsed. Um, it's, it's, it sounds like a lot of work. Um, it's actually not a huge amount of work. It's, um,
is going to be easy enough to do. What I was most concerned about was the uh, amount of time it would take to recreate the, the lens, to make a new lens, but um, that ended up taking very little time, so I'm, I'm happy with this progress. It went through despite the knot. Wonderful, because this is the last stitch on this one. And then I can, um, then I can move on to the second leaf. I might chase up the veins at another point, but I don't want to do that now. And right now I mostly just want to get it made. Is that, is that, a, is that another knot? Did the first knot beget an, okay, no, it's fine. It just got caught. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. Right now, let's tie you off. And you're done. Now, the advantage of that knot is that I don't have to tie another one for the second leaf. Yeah, exactly. Foundation's done, extra details later. Let's just get it made. I'm really liking this color of thread. Uh, Lilligon, that was an extremely good idea to use some dark green. Thank you very much. Uh, so I might actually do the stitching, um, the, the construction stitching with this as well. Come on. Come on. No. There we go. <laughs> what was your first big cosplay? Death Vigil. I can't say I've heard of Death Vigil. What kind of uh, what kind of comic is it? Or did I read that right? Is it a comic? It is a comic. Nice, very nice.
yeah, from what I've from what I've heard, bodices are very difficult. Um, they can be they can be tricksy. We're uh, we're planning on getting a mannequin. One of one an adjustable mannequin, so we can uh, so to make a uh, patterning easier for us. Because at the moment, I just I just guess. <laughs> that's fine that's fine I have to say this is very a very different vibe to the last cra crafting live stream where I was mostly using an angle grinder I feel less, um, conscious of noise. Join the Death Vigil in their ongoing war against the ever-growing power of the primordial enemy. Only catch is you have to die first, become a corporeal, immortal death knight, and obtain reality-altering weaponry in the never-ending battle between good and evil. And well, that sounds fun. That sounds pretty fun. Currently uploading. Oh, it's a webcomic. Interesting. I used to read a lot of webcomics. I used to read an awful lot of webcomics. Um, back when I was in college and then I just stopped having the time. Ah, cool. Why did um why did lock lockdown have you stop reading? Or were you just like, were you just struck by the, the existential dread? Stepan Sejic? I've, I've seen that name before. I've never heard it written out, but. That makes sense. That makes sense.
Yeah, I can imagine. Um, because like I was saying, the, the existential dread, and I suppose if you're working from home, which I'm not really able to do with my job, um, you probably feel under more pressure to be to be working all the time and not doing um not doing pleasurable things as much. That must be a pain, actually. Just that feeling. Yeah, yeah, it's it's habit building. That's the whole thing. That's that's likely what's doing it, and not just habit building, but losing habits. Tis hard. Yeah, no, it is very, very important. That's what um that's what got me through most of lockdown, honestly. Um I started getting up um about the same time I would if I was going to work and I'd go downstairs, um I'd listen to a podcast and I'd do Duolingo. Um then I'd no, I wouldn't I would I would just do Duolingo, then I would listen to a podcast while practicing with my harp. Then I'd um. I'd read for a while. And and. Try to do some of my own work after that, after I finished reading. That was the, that was the structured part of my routine done for the day. Okay, so that is the uh, the front panel pretty much finished, decorated. Uh, so now I can begin assembly. I'm going to start with a fresh thread for that. Okay. <laughs> so the um the concept between these ten eye patches is that um one of my favorite YouTubers, Rachel Maxi, she does uh, vintage stuff mostly, sometimes some cosplay. She did a video of ten adventurer outfits, and I liked it, and I liked the concept. And I was trying to think of um, more things I could do um, with my eye patches, because um, when I when I made the when I did the whole thing about I want to make eye patches for people hurt in the uprisings, um, I ended up discovering that there's a a, a monocular vision community, and that a lot of people who have 
partial vision in one eye, it hasn't occurred to them that they could use eye patches. And also that like most of the eye patches that are available look like shit. Um, they're, they're awful. Like the ones that are, you know, suitable for extended use anyway. So I thought, well, why don't, if I start making stuff about eye patches, about wearing them, about like how you can make them nice and that kind of thing, that might help people who also have partial vision in one eye and might help them see, hey, this is an option for you. And yeah, you can make them look nice. So what I'm doing based on that Rachel Maxi video is uh, 10, uh, 10 adventure outfits that are going to be styled around a specific eye patch. Um, I'm mostly using my own categories, not the ones Rachel used, but I am borrowing one of hers, which was Middle Earther. You basically dressing as a hobbit and I thought the oak leaves that would that would be a very hobbity kind of style to, of an eye patch but I'm a giant Tolkien nerd so obviously I had to I had to copy the the middle earther I had to legally obliged I've even had one or two people with um, with uh, partial vision in the one eye um, come up to me and say that like an eye patch had never occurred to me before and I've tried it and it really helped so thank you and one of them has even started making her own eye patches and they look really good <laughs> yeah, in the contract, absolutely. There's, um, yeah, yeah, you usually would, but, um, but the thing is that, like, when you've got partial vision and it's not correctable with lenses or anything, it causes all kinds of problems, all kinds of problems, like, um, Like, your brain is constantly trying to correct the vision in the bad eye, based on what's happening in the good eye. So, that causes exhaustion, causes fatigue. That's an awful lot of extra energy to be spending all the time. And then there's the fact that if, you, if your bad eye is the dominant eye, like it is with me, my right eye, you end up becoming like a t-rex in jurassic park here your, your visual acuity is based on movement um <laughs> and computer screens especially anything up close my 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 right eye 
actively interferes with my left eye. So I was getting headaches. Uh, it becomes very light sensitive. Um, so fatigue, headaches, migraines. Uh, my optician agrees with me that I'd honestly probably be better off if I just didn't have the right eye at all. I, I'm, 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 I am considering having the right eye taken out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so, and the, the eye, pa eye patch pretty much solves all of those problems. Like the, the, the quality of life improvement that was made when I started wearing it was dramatic. Yeah, no, yeah, it, it works really well. Like, I was getting these really bad headaches at work. And it was getting to the point where I thought I'd have to quit my job. Um... Though that was only when I was first noticing the vision problem. It was before I went and got diagnosed. Um, <laughs> uh, when I got diagnosed, I was I was told, yeah, there's there's nothing we can do. There's no glasses or anything that'll help. So I uh, the very next day I made this one, which was my first eye patch. Um, but yeah, uh, glass eye potentially. Um, honestly, what I'm thinking of is if I'm, if I'm getting a prosthetic, there's no way in hell I'm just going to make it look like an actual eye. Um, I was thinking maybe like a bronze sphere or, um, one thing I was considering was getting like a miniaturized projector installed that I can control from my phone. Um, something like that. Just go full fucking cyberpunk with it. Cause like, no. All right, the knot has happened again, but it's at a point where I might be able to do something about it. Um, still at at the bird nest stage, not the not the tight little knot stage. Um, but um, or something would look really cool. And what I was thinking was I could have these um these pre-made little, little kind of very vague, not, not super inform information dense, little kind of like maybe shadow puppet style animations of, um, of different stories. So when I'm, when I'm storytelling at work, I can literally project it on the wall as I go. Um, cause that would be, that would be so cool. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. Like, when you're being given an opportunity to customize your flesh prison, you need to embrace it. You need to go whole hog with it. No pun intended. <laughs> See that idea, the the projector idea, and projecting stories up on the wall. 
while I tell them. That that goes well with a, another thing I've been wanting to do. And I can do, actually, now that I have money. Because um, I didn't have money when I first came up with the idea. Was, um... I have found instructions online, along with the appropriate code, for making a harp where the strings are lasers. And having a laser harp while being able to project stories out of my face, that would be amazing. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I saw that. I saw that as well. That's that's fantastic. Fuck yeah, I want to be tall. But yeah, I want any and all prosthetics I end up getting to enhance my otherworldliness. Yeah, 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 could do, could do. Um, I was even thinking if I ever, um, if I ever end up becoming a wheelchair user, my intention is not an electric wheelchair, nor is it a hand-pushed wheelchair, or well, it will, I'll have to get a hand-pushed wheelchair for it, but my intention is to get a wheelchair and a dog team, like sled dogs, and, and that can be my, my method of locomotion from there. Sled dogs and a wheelchair. Oh, have I gotten the sizing wrong? Shit, I may have gotten the sizing wrong. It's very hard to tell at this stage. I may just need to pull it super tight. <laughs> I think it would be especially cool though at a LARP. <laughs> Yeah, that would be fun. But uh, I think the um, the dog team wheelchair would espe be especially cool at a LARP. Um, you just show up to a combat LARP, essentially in a chariot. Oh, a dog chariot. And then everyone has to deal with that. <laughs> oh no a knot has happened oh no a knot <sighs> I hate knots I hate these so much okay okay I think I yes I disposed of the knot cool <laughs> I think the more important question is Um 
I don't think it's Corgis. Um, I think Freya um, from Norse mythology has a chariot pulled by um, by those big forest cats that uh, that Vikings would keep on their ship. Um, in in Welsh mythology, however, um, fairies are said to ride around on the backs of corgis. That might be why you're why you're mixing it up. It's calm. It's 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 normal enough to to mash things together in your head by mistake. Happens to everyone. I think this is gonna work. It's just gonna be super tight, which isn't a bad thing. Um, some of my more recent patterns. There we go. I did my, um, one of my first storytelling streams yesterday. It was just a practice stream. Um, I was just practicing some stories I'm working on and I did a few warm up stories. I was quite pleased with how it went. I got a few people in and um, I got some requests, one for, uh, one for a story I've only ever done once before and that was sometime last year. Oh, um, my plan is to do these eye patch streaming or eye patch making streams every Sunday. Um, and when I'm done with the eye patches, I have some other projects I want to do. Um, I want to make a lawn Furby. Um, uh, I need to reskin this already badly reskinned Elmo over here. I have a few other things I want to make, uh, little awful creatures. So they will probably become the new Sunday live stream when I'm done with the eye patches. Um, so yeah, Sundays are going to be crafting streams. All of my other streams will probably be some kind of storytelling. I will eventually be doing a, um, a proper kind of show once I've worked out Twitch well enough and gotten all the assets ready where I'll be like fully in character and I'll have probably little sketches playing and a good pre-roll and everything. <laughs> That's very cool. <laughs> um, that'll probably be once a month once it's, once it's actually happening. Um, I have, um, and that's going to involve a little bit of, um, there's going to be a little bit of involvement with, uh, with Kate Nix and the Lullaby Lounge there. A little bit of kind of crossover stuff Kate and I have been talking about.
because I've been wanting to wait, work with Kate for literally years. Um, I I've been, I think I've been following Kate since the since the Haley Jane years. Um, we've only just recently uh, actually started talking to each other. Is the thing. In the past year or so. Okay, is it going to stretch over this last bit? It may and it may not. If it doesn't, I may have to get my Dremel and do some grinding. If I really need to. That's gonna need a. Uh, that's gonna need some grinding away. Okay. This used to belong to my grandfather. Um, I inherited it and many of his other tools. I think it was the year before. No, yeah, it was the year before. The last year was my grandmother, his wife. <laughs> Okay, the stream still seems to be going. I think I'm just gonna I'm just gonna rely on you to tell me if it's still going or not. It's not frozen. At least on not not on my end. So we'll see. Yeah, my grandfather was a carpenter and bricklayer. And probably one of the most, like, in terms of building things, most competent people I've ever met. I'm trying not to alert the T-Rex. <laughs> And uh, he had an awful lot of respect for anyone who could make things. He uh, he used to call it having hands. Yeah, you have to have hands. He had a great amount of respect for anyone who had hands. <laughs> okay. That could be my end. We seem to be a lot more stable than we were on the last one, which I had to restart twice. Or, well, the the, uh, the last crafting one. It could be on my end because I'm outside. Um, or did you not get to, to know your grandfathers? Or... I sometimes feel like I should have a sewing tweezers. I feel like that would actually be a good idea.
Right, that makes sense. That makes sense. That's a shame, but... Never asked. Well, I I don't think I did either. Um, it was just kind of obvious because my granddad never stopped doing it. Um, like he still used his time I was there. He was building something. Um, well, two of the toys I had from when I was a small child, which I still have. Um, around about the time from the time I was three years old, I was obsessed with dinosaurs. I had the all these magazines telling me all the information about them and everything. And my grandfather he made two uh, little toys: one a Stegosaurus, one a Parasaurolophus. And they had like they were proper mechanical toys, like they they were made of wood, but you'd roll them back and forth on the ground and their legs would go up and down and their heads would bob and I still have them they're they're upstairs gorgeous things but um yeah I never had like a choice in knowing what my grandfather did it was just always on display Don't feel don't feel too bad for for not asking like kids are like that. It's just part of being a child, really. It doesn't occur to you to ask a lot of these things. Yeah, no, that's that's absolutely fair as well. Like, who would you have learned it from? There was no one to learn it from. That's not your fault. Yeah, precisely. Like, who else are you going to learn from, learn about your family from, but your family? Who else would know? Or who else would know that you you get a chance to get to know yourself?
I'm good. I'm glad you're getting to learn something. It can be important to learn these things. Especially if it's someone like you loved and cared about and wanted in your life. Like, if it was a family member you, you, you didn't want around and, and who like you cut off or something, that's a, that's a totally different story. But if it's someone you loved and you cared about, it's, it's good to learn about them. So that is basic assembly done. Yeah, the two sides of the patch are sewn together, so with the core in the middle. So what I'm going to do is try to heat it up and use the adhesive in the um, in the warbler to to glue the back patch down. Um, and if that doesn't work, I'll have to get the glue in there somehow. So I'm going to try that now. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that kind of thing can happen. That kind of connection. Like, making things is part of how me and my grandfather bonded a lot, so... Learning that kind of stuff, it can make you feel more connected to your family and more connected to your roots. That's very cool. For a huge... Yeah, yeah, that kind of thing can happen. That kind of connection. Like, making things is part of how me and my grandfather bonded a lot, so learning that kind of stuff, it can make you feel more connected to your family and more connected to your roots. That's very cool. For a huge, they were, they were deeply political and they were very, um, tended to be very progressive at that point in history. All right, this, this heating up isn't working. Um, I'm not sure if it's just not working or if it's, if it's more that, um, I can't really apply as much heat as I think it would need because I've just realized it would deform the shape. So, uh, I'm going to try something else. And, um, ew, what's leaked in here um uh, hello mokajin i don't think i've seen you in here before I am working on a new eye patch for myself. 
and the chat is currently having a, uh, a conversation about learning more about and getting to know and forming bonds and connections with dead relatives. Um, we, we got a little heavy in our conversation. That's fine. These things happen. It's grand. Um, how are you? Okay, yeah. Glue worked. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, in a very, you kind of nice casual way in a very very kind of positive way i'm a i'm a strong advocate for for death positivity and and looking on the bright side of death nice Nice. What kind of paintings are you working on? I'm going to grab my uh, belt punch very quickly. Alright, we're getting to the point where I can start working on the straps and how to attach the straps. I'm going to have to take off my eye patch for a bit to plan this out. Um, ooh, that's a very cool idea. I love copper. Copper is a gorgeous metal. People should use it more. Um, I've been using bronze lately, but copper is also lovely. Okay, so we need to be about yay. So you go there. You need to be about. We'll call it there at a guess. If I get it wrong, I have more. Etching is fun. Um, I want to do more etching. I learned how to do um, salt water etching, which is uh, surprisingly easy, actually. Um, I want to do more of it. I've only used it in small things at the moment, but I would like to do more. I need to have another good look at how this worked. Right, okay. Right, okay. Oh, yeah, it's a, it's a gorgeous metal. A metal work seems to be a, a bit of a dying art these days. So it's nice to see someone else doing it. So I'm going to put the holes in the, uh, in the material. Actually. How do you need to be oriented? Oh, 
Okay, 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 okay. So. to be Wait, would you be just to go by yourself? No, you wouldn't. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay, I see. I see. Shadow box sounds lovely. I'd love to learn to weld. I, I want to learn to weld so badly. back on there because this is disorienting. Bridget's cross out of copper would be so cool. I'd be very cool. So we're just getting ready to assemble the uh, the strap and attach it, and that's the last thing. We're we're nearly done here. Ah, oh, wonderful.
Okay. <laughs> good, good, good. Yeah, Project Talk is nice. It's lovely. I, I'm liking how these crafting... This is only my second crafting stream, but I'm liking how they're going. It's just nice and, and casual and people just talking about what they're up to and what they're doing. It's It's been it's been very pleasant, very wholesome. Now, I need help deciding what kind of rivet I want to use to hold this together. So, this is the eye patch itself. That's how it looks. And these are the two kinds of rivets that I have. Or the ones that I think about using. So we've got the golden rivet over here, the shinier one, and the bronze rivet, which is the slightly duller one. I think these are both good colours. I'm just not sure which one to go with. I kind of think the the gold might be be slightly more um, hobbity, but I don't know. What do you guys think? Or folks, what do you folks think? Right, we've got one vote for gold. One vote for gold, one vote for bronze. Um, <laughs> we're gonna need a. Uh, we're gonna need someone to break that tie. I will say, normally I wouldn't even consider the gold because I like bronze so much, but I feel like I feel like gold would actually suit this. But bronze wood as well, so I don't know. Do we have any other votes? Are we going to get a tiebreaker? Br yeah, yeah, Mocha Jin. Um, <laughs> somebody break this tie. <laughs> <laughs> a well-off or a poorer hobbit. I'm kind of semi-basing it on Bilbo Baggins. On the whole look. Like, I, I want, I've got this really really lovely dressing gown I found in a charity shop that I'm going to use in it as well um so Bilbo Baggins is kind of a well-off hobbit isn't he oh I believe I've frozen <laughs> 